kiss for you. No one watched the mouse video, so I expect this to get like six views max. So for the six people watching, here we go. There are many factors that go into picking a TV. Today I'm going to try and explain in each location slash use case which TV is best and try to give people good advice on picking a new TV in general. First off, the use case. Then we're into a mouse video, which you can watch here by the way, since no one did. The first step to picking a new TV is where it's going to be used. Is a family room TV, a personal bedroom TV, a theater TV, or a back room TV? Depending on the location of the TV, certain features and prices are favorable. I'm going to go through each location and recommend a TV. Location 1, Living Room. There are main two or three types of TVs that people will typically buy for the living room, keeping in mind that this is usually the most expensive and largest TV in the house. There's LCD, OLED, and VA. In quick explanation, I could make separate videos on both these topics. LCD is the most common type, and no matter what modifier you put on it, it will be inferior to OLED in all but one category. LCDs are really cheap to make, and are fine for 97% of people. They're reasonably bright, have good to great color representation of colors in space, great viewing angles, nice contrast with common modifiers like fault or QLED, which make them have, fault makes them have variable lighting, and QLED makes them have bigger, brighter colors, uh, respectively. Most TVs have LCD panels. OLED, by contrast, is much more expensive for now, and has three main advantages. It has an infinite contrast, because the pixels can be turned on and off individually. The contrast level makes OLEDs much nicer to look at, and much deeper, richer, vibrant colors uh, in most scenarios. OLED uh, can also be made much thinner, so the TVs can be adhered to a wall like a wallpaper. The third benefit is color and color reproduction. OLEDs can create many more colors and a wider color space, an OCD at this example here with the phones uh, and you can pretty much tell if you've if you have an OLED panel by the either grayness that comes around it by looking at a angle on thing like an iPhone 10R or an OLED panel on most Android phones and a lot of the typical iPhones since 2017 2018 Imagine that kind of technology on a much larger scale for TVs. Two downsides of OLED are price and burning. Because OLED panels can be turned on and off, if uh, left on for a certain color for a long period of time, that color can be permanently adhered to the screen as a ghost image of sorts. It's up to your budget on which TV screen type you choose. Uh, while OLEDs are becoming cheaper, they are consistently 50 to 75 percent more expensive than LCDs. The long section of the entire video is done. Bingo. Some household crap to get through. Smart means the TV can get internet access to things like Netflix, Hulu, and download apps. You want this, unless you have a PS4, or Roku, or Apple TV, something that does that for you. It used to be four or five years ago that it was cheaper to buy a dumb TV and hook up a PS4 or NVIDIA Shield to it and get those features than buy a smart TV, which is actually what I ended up doing since I didn't use my TV for much except gaming. There was no need to buy a $500 smart TV when I could get a $250 dumb TV, hook up a PS4 to it. 4K UHD is just the pixel count, 3840 by 2160 p 4k references the vertical pixel count even though the horizontal pixel count is technically 2k it's measured everywhere except for full hd which is measured for some reason horizontally next we need to quickly talk about software most neighboring tvs like lg samsung vizio have their own software and for the most part it works well other than some software on tvs like sony t cl element and vizio uh, that won't support some apps because they run on android tv that's not to say they won't ever support those apps, but if there's an app you know you want, make sure it's compatible with Android TV. Some aren't. Vizio, for instance, runs their own OS, but it's not popular until developers have to custom make apps for it, and so they typically don't get name apps until much later. I've touched on it before, but fault or full array local dimming is the process of changing the lighting zones on the TV to match what is typically perceived as light and illumination. The moon is a great example. Without fault, the moon and the background are stagnant and don't change depending on the moon's location. With fault enabled, the moon glows in the background the glow moves the moon across the screen. Fall was and still is fairly expensive to implement because of the lighting zones, and so many manufacturers typically use local dimming in a different way. Back or side lit local dimming is only from either the bottom or the side of the display, and looks considerably worse when compared to full array local dimming. It's not even worth turning it on. So if you're looking for a TV and it says backlight or local dimming, make sure it's fault or else it's really not worth getting or turning on. Uh, there's actually another type of panel, as I said before, called VA which is actually created by Samsung for their TVs. It has a much brighter and contrastier colors and a larger viewing angles. They tend to not have the best color representation and oversaturate certain shades of colors like blue and red. QLED is also commonly paired with these TVs, also made by Samsung for their TVs, and it's what gives them those vibrant colors that sometimes oversaturate. So I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be to edit, so I'm going to go over here and give you my recommendations for TVs for the living room by price. Here are my three options that I suggest. 
Next, I'm going to recommend uh, for a personal TV, bedroom TV. I'm assuming this is going to be used less and doesn't need to be nearly as big as a 65 inch or a 55 inch. So here are my recommendations by price as well. Back room or spare TV, so I'm going to do a bedroom TV, but I had a 55 inch option in case people have the space for it. You have three options there by price. Finally, the theater room TV, because where I live, there's a bunch of rich people who have these. Usually these are insanely large, so here you go for rec ones I recommend by price. There's three of them. Anyways, I hope uh, anyone found this useful in picking out a TV. These are just some of my recommendations, and I just wanted this video to like talk about TVs and stuff, because a bunch of people end up being confused about all the things you can look into a TV, and if it's not worth explaining, it can be uh, a little annoying to find out. So I hope this video was helpful, and you want to see more of this in the future.